So, 3,000 gallon swim spa, 450 gallon old Sundance Optima, both of them heated with gas heated water from just a standard home water heater. It's pretty big though, it's like 76,000 BTU per hour, 75 gallon, it's a Bradford and White. It's got two extra openings right there and there for um, radiant floor heating. And so, right now it's kind of set to its max. It can probably pump out like 145 degree water when it's on its max. This circuit right here is for the hot tub. It draws off of here. It's got a smaller, probably actually the smallest grund faucet they make. That's a 15 series. This is like a 26 series. This is what the, um, uh, the bigger 3,000 gallon spa is using. This one's capable of like 20 gallons per minute, which means that it can circulate all the water that's inside this tank in four minutes. And um, last night when I did heat up the swim spa for the first time, this temperature gauge was like down at like 120 degrees or so. It's like the, the heater was on its knees. Normally it can like crank along at 140 to 145 when it's doing a small body of water. But my goodness, it was just, it was really, but it still managed to heat that thing up before the morning. It started at 1030 at night. So this particular one, there it is. Hot water goes out. Right there, through the pump, down here, and out the wall, and over to the swim spa, which is on the other side of the wall there. And the water comes back in, this blue guy right there, and drops down into the top into the usual cold return for any hot water heater. Um, check valves go this way, this one goes this way. Helps you know keep the flow going in the right direction. This is a high spot in the, the uh, heat exchanger system, so there's a little bleeder right there. Same thing over here on this one, there's a bleeder right there. And actually when I first fire these up, what I do is, uh, it's, it's actually garden hose thread, but it's, uh, I basically hooked the garden hose up there and actually fed this all so that it was all full of water before I turned the pumps on. That was pretty handy. Anyways, that's uh, that's the system, and oh, well, what we got over here, let's see. The, um, the, so the power distribution board here, there's 220 volt signals from both spas coming in. And they go to these special relays, which are powered by 220 volt signal, you know. And when those C220, they turn on, and you see what it sounds like. So click, motor goes on, and it's sending 110 over to the motor, which is just on regular Romex. So um, the motor only needs like, you know, one and a half amps or something. But um, the SPA speaks 220, so I just used 220 as the signal to tell these uh, two uh, guys went to turn on So the uh, hot water heater itself is basically on all the time just like it would be for a home It's constantly keeping the water warm uh, The insulation on it is really really good um, And it's basically fed by my well right here with another check valve that keeps it pressurized Right now I think the pressure is we're close to 80 psi or so. Let's see if we can get that in focus Get that in focus. It's 80 psi it's got a, the um, expansion tank in case there's a problem now what that does is basically keep this stuff from boiling but it's never going to get up hot enough to boil but it's basically just keeps the whole system nice and pressurized water is always being heated the two spas have uh, filter cycles that don't coincide with each other right now I'm running them both in economy mode so that they only um, do heating when they're doing a filter cycle and their filter cycles are at different times so basically they won't be hitting this guy at the same time which is a good thing because the hot tub really needs the 140 degree water and when the uh, swim spa is asking for water the water temperature does get down a little bit lower inside the tank because there's just so much water to heat in the swim spa.